I missed it. All right. Uh, all right, then. Let's, let's get back into our Bible study, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. And uh, could you turn this fan on, Sarah? Number two, please. Number two. All right. First Thessalonians chapter number five. It says in verse number one, I'm going to read verse one and two or so, and then jump down a little ways. But it says, But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when we, they shall say, Peace and safety, then suddenly de, uh, sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not darkened, uh, in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. We're talking about preparation for a future day, date, event, when uh, the Lord returns for us, and uh, he said it shouldn't surprise us. Some will be surprised. Many, in fact, will be surprised by that. But there's no need for you all, uh, if you're saved, if you know the Lord, to be surprised by that or taken um, uh, off guard by that. And, and we're going to get into some thoughts as far as preparation. Uh, you know, <clears throat> let, me, let me say this. I've talked to, I've had opportunity to have conversation with several folks lately about different things. Uh, you know, end time things, what's going to happen, when, what's heaven going to be like, uh, what's all the arrangement of all the details, uh, and, and then other things uh, that, if I just be frank with you, make very little difference at all. Whether you understand it or not, doesn't make any difference at all. There are so many things in this Bible that we hold that we need to know, that we need to be practicing, that we need to implement into our lives. Uh, and unfortunately, so many times we focus on the things that really just don't make any difference at all, right? Uh, and maybe you've seen that in your own life. I've seen it in mine. You know, I, I, I have a list of things to do, and then there are those periphery things, those Things that are in my life that, yeah, they could get done, but if they never get done, so what? Well, those things tend to eat up my time. And the things that are really important, necessary, and pertinent, they get left undone because of these piranha of things that are out there that just consume me. And so I would just encourage us, that's, that same problem that I have managing my time, we as Christians have in managing our life. The things that are not important at all tend to consume our time. The things that we really ought to be focused on oftentimes get left completely unthought about, undone. And, um, and so... Jesus is coming. We need to get ready. There are things here that he says are going to help us uh, to be ready and, and to have the right to attitude as we uh, wait on his coming. And that's what we've been talking about. And so in, uh, if, if we jump down to uh, verse 13, verse 16, um, he says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Uh, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, and, uh, and then he talks about, uh, in verse 23, The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Set you apart. That's what sanctify means. It means take you as a chosen vessel, a chosen thing, and, and, uh, and, and you're precious to him, and uh, set you apart wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and body, uh, soul and body be preserved blameless 
unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there's the goal. There's the, the uh, bringing things into focus. Why are we talking about these things in chapter 5? Because Jesus is coming, and we want to be ready for that. Uh, we don't want to be like those five foolish versions that uh, weren't prepared for the Lord's coming. And I realized that you know that was a, a parable talking about salvation. They weren't prepared. They didn't get in. Uh, but uh, the principle is this. There are things that aren't being done that should be done, uh, and uh, we need to focus on those things because Jesus is coming. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for the day. Thank you for your love for us and your mercy and grace in our lives. And, and Father, the truth of the matter is we often don't manage our time well, manage our priorities well, and uh, we need your help with that. I pray that you'd guide and direct our thoughts this morning and that you would uh, show us uh, individually and as families, what our priorities really ought to be uh, so that we can be ready for when you appear. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, very quickly, we talked about rejoicing evermore a few weeks ago uh, and how, man, it's, it's tough. Today is a tough time to live in, but he said we need to rejoice, and we should do that. Uh, we need to pray without ceasing, and we constantly need to communicate with our Lord uh, and, uh, and our Savior, verse number 17. Verse number 18, we talked about, uh, in everything, give thanks. Um, it's God's will. It's, it's, it's what he wants. It's the right way to be. Uh, and just like Job, uh, you know, e even if we lose out on all our physical comforts and all of our physical, well, uh, uh, prosperities, uh, we still have the forgiveness of sins to rejoice over and, uh, and give thanks for. So uh, there's a lot there that we need to uh, keep in mind and keep the right focus about. So let's talk about verse number 19 for a little bit this morning. It simply says this, quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Uh, what does that mean? want to just talk about that for a little while this morning. The word quench means to extinguish something or put it out, right? If I had a candle this morning and I come over here and dunked it in the baptistry, I would extinguish it. I would, I would uh, be putting that fire out. I would quench it. Uh, and, uh, and that's what that's talking about. So quench, extinguish, put out the Holy Spirit. Well, you can't put him out as far as eliminate. You can't put him out. You can't, you know, if you're saved, he's taken up residence in your heart. You'll, he'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. So you can't get it, put him out of your life entirely. But you can shut him down. You can shut him up, even, uh, to an extent. And so that's what, that's what this is talking about. I want you to look at a couple of passages with me as we get into this, just so we understand the context. Back in Ephesians chapter 5, I want you to notice verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18. <clears throat> it says there, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always, there's that giving of thanks again, uh, for all things unto the Lord and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourself one to another, and on and on it goes there. But th those are... Uh, Ways those are demonstrations that is fruit that the Holy Spirit of God has filled, permeated, uh, taken full control of your life. Be filled with the Spirit isn't talking about how much of the Spirit you've got. He is a person, the person of the Holy Spirit. So you can't get uh, a, a third of Him. You can't get half of Him. You can't get 75%. You're not 99.9. I've got 99.9% .9 of the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. What he's talking about is how much of your life does the Holy Spirit of God control? How much of your uh, daily life are you submitting yourself to his guidance and direction? And, uh, and, and the reality is, if I'm not listening to the Holy Spirit of God, 
whether it's, hey, speak to that person about me, or, uh, hey, you should go to church Sunday, and you say, ah, maybe next Sunday. Uh, whatever it is, if you're saying no to the Holy Spirit of God, if you're uh, ignoring or not paying any attention to, then you, to that extent, your life is not full of the Holy Spirit. Does he control the words that come out of your mouth? If he doesn't, if you don't allow him to, you have, you're, you're not full of the Holy Spirit. Your tongue is not controlled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, does the Holy Spirit of God uh, control or does he have uh, direction in your life to control where your feet take you or where your mind goes? Whatever, to whatever extent you are not allowing the Holy Spirit of God to direct you, you are not full of the Holy Spirit. He says, be full of the Holy Spirit, not uh, with wine, wherein is ex excess. Uh, and, and I've taught this and, and preached this before, but you think about wine. If you take a glass, and, and wine in the Bible, Wade did a nice study on this recently, wine in the Bible is talking about the, the fruit of the vine, is talking about, specifically here, is talking about you take in that juice, whether fermented or not, into your body. Can you tell the, the, the grape juice, hey, listen, you can, you can go here, but you can't go here in your body? No. If you consume an alcoholic beverage, can you say, all right, alcohol, you can have everything from here down, but you, you can't control my mind? I, want to, I, I still want to think clearly after I consume alcohol. You can't do that. If you consume it, it is going to permeate your whole being. It's going to affect how you think, how you talk, how you walk, how you interact with people. It's going to, it's going to totally consume every, and influence every part of your life. He says that is what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be doing. Don't allow alcohol to take control of your being. Allow the Holy Spirit to take control of your being. And so that plays into a part of that. Now think about this. Go back to Galatians. One more uh, book back. Galatians chapter number 5. I want you to notice verses 22 and 23. This very expressly speaks of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. All right? So uh, the, the fruit, the results, the effect of the Holy Spirit of God is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, self-control. That's the last one. Now, as you just assess your own life, your own thoughts, would you say that your life demonstrates the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit can be seen in your life? Maybe, again, self-assessment here, you can't tell whether I can see it in your life, but you ought to be able to tell well whether you can see the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life or not. Now, the truth is, if you have the Holy Spirit, I ought to be able to see it. And if I have the Holy Spirit, you ought to be able to see it. But we're not even going there right now. Right now, we're just thinking about this. Can you see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you, is your life, uh, is it uh, demonstrating love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance? Does your life demonstrate those, those character qualities, that fruit of the Holy Spirit? Say, well, I, you know, in this area, uh, it may, in this area, but man, not so much in that area. Then you are quenching the Holy Spirit of God in that area. You're saying no to Him. You are not allowing uh, the fruit of the Spirit to grow in your life. You know, <clears throat> this uh, early this year, uh, I went out to prune the fruit trees in my yard. And you're supposed to prune them. I mean, ideally, you could prune them later in the uh, late winter, early spring. But uh, it, it would have been better for me to do it last fall. It would have. So here's the thing. I went out early this spring, and I trimmed 
took out, cut out, removed one-third of all the branches in all of my fruit trees. Nah, the fruit trees themselves are looking great right now, but there's no fruit because we got a hard freeze, and it zapped all of that fruit. You could go out and I could show you, hey, that's my pear tree, and you go, hmm, I don't see any pears. I could take you down the hill and say, hey, this is one of my apple trees, and you could look at it and say, hmm, I don't see any apples. What's happened? The fruit got quenched. It got eliminated. It got put out. It got cut off. It got, it, it got destroyed so that those fruit trees will bear no fruit this year. They're fruitless. Hmm. It's sad. I was looking forward to different fruits. You know, sometimes I think God gets sad because he was looking forward to some fruits that get quenched in our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness, temperance. I'm talking about quenching the Holy Spirit of God. All right? Now understand, the, Jesus taught us that he's the, the vine and we're the branches, and the branch that isn't bearing much fruit gets pruned so that it will bear more fruit. Now that was my goal in pruning my fruit trees so that I could have good fruit later this year, but that didn't work that way. Circumstances did not allow. The fruit tree itself didn't control that. The weather did. Unfortunately, it's not the weather in my life that's exterminating the fruit in my life. It's my own, it's my own actions and decisions and, and, and will, primarily my will. So one more verse, and then we'll, when, then we'll come back to this thought in... Uh, Thessalonians. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, and I want you to look at verses 12 and onward. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse number 12, he says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself judgeth judge no man, is judged rather of no man. <clears throat> verse 16 for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him <laughs> can you teach God anything I think not but we have the mind of Christ it says you know the Holy Spirit in your life in my life is there as a teacher he's there to instruct and guide and help us to mature in the things of God uh, and, and you know if you don't have the Holy Spirit of God you can't understand the things of God but if you have the Holy Spirit of God he is to bring understanding uh, of godly things into our life but if we're quenching him if we're putting him down putting him out extinguishing him if every time he goes, uh, excuse me, I say, mm -mm, no, not interested. There's a children's movie, Bolt. I think, wasn't it Bolt? That was with a dog. Yeah, 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 it was, a, it was Bolt. And uh, I'm not asking my kid, not, I'm not ready to watch that again. It's been a while, it's okay, I'm good with it. But it was kind of a cutesy thing. But anyway, there's a, there's a line in there where Bolt and the boy's manager, the boy's coming up, and he says, but I want to take Bolt home, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And he's like, let's, let's just put a pin in it. Sometimes we do that to the Holy Spirit, don't we? He's pricking our heart. He said, hey, go witness to this person. Hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to go there. Hey, you need to. And we go, no. Maybe later we'll put a pin in it for now. What is that? That's quenching the Holy Spirit. That's saying, eh. 
not really wanting to deal with that right now, so we'll just, thanks, but no thanks. All right? And, you know, there is something that God wanted you to do, something that God wanted you to learn, something that God wanted you to develop in your life, and you're saying, ah, nah, not interested. Maybe later, or not. <clears throat> Quenching. Putting down, putting out, saying no to the Holy Spirit of God. He said, don't do that because God, listen, what is, what is the purpose of, of the Holy Spirit and what is he trying to do? He's trying to prepare you for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he shows up, are, you, are we going to be ready? Not if we continue putting him off. Not if we continue quenching him. We need to allow him. God, tell me everything. Tell me anything. You can, man, prick my heart and bring conviction and let me have it so that I am ready for that. We live in a soft society. You know what I'm talking about? Soft. Well, we just don't like pain. We don't like hard work. We, we, if it's difficult at all, eh, eh, nah. Yeah, yeah, soft in, in, in feelings. You know, and, and we, we're seeing it in the generations that are coming up. That we just want to sit in the air conditioning. Well, listen. <laughs> Yeah. I, and, and you know the thing about the air conditioning? It's addicting. Man, what? If you're outside working in the heat, and I'm talking about working by the sweat of your brow, you know how, how God said to Adam what he's going to have to do? If you're really following through with that, and listen, I can sweat with the best of them. <clears throat> And then you come into a house where the air conditioner is set on 70. You're thinking, whoa. Or maybe you're sitting in the air conditioning of 70 and you step out into the heat that we've had the last week and humidity and you go, whoa, no, I'm going to stay right in here. Right? I'm just saying we're soft in this way. And much of what the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to accomplish is not the easy stuff, the air-conditioned stuff. It's the sweat stuff. It's the hard work stuff. It's the stuff that, you know, it, it, we're just going to have to suck it up and go be big people and do what we're supposed to do. Right? That's, that's what we need to do. I just want to encourage you this morning. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't tell him no. You need to be telling him yes. Now, let's move on. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, look at verse 20. Verse 20. Um, hmm, that's what I have written here. 19, yeah. Yes, verse 20. Despise not prophesying. Hmm. Despise not prophesying. <laughs> The word despise means to scorn, to disdain, to have a low opinion of, have a low opinion of, or even worse, to abhor. The prophesies, what is that? Talking about preaching and teaching. Talking forth the truth. To preach or to instruct in doctrine. He says we're not supposed to despise it. We're supposed to love it. Why? Because this, the presenting of the truth of God's Word, is what the Holy Spirit is then going to use to bring conviction into the heart and, and to, to let us know throughout the week, hey, did you hear what the, the preacher said? Did you hear what the Scripture said? Hey, when you was reading the Word of God this morning, did you hear what it said? Did you see that? And he says don't 
Don't despise that. Don't scorn that. Don't uh, have a low opinion of that. That's exactly what we need. My kids have never been, they were never signed up and went to public school. Now, I'm not picking on you if you are or have, I'm just saying. There have been times when we've gone into the bedrooms in the morning and said, time to get up. And they were a little slow to rouse, if you know what I mean. Time to get up. And they'd come dragging out into the kitchen, do, you know, got their chore list to do, and got to eat their breakfast. Hey, school's coming. The kids on the school bus have already went by. You haven't even had your chores done. You haven't even had your breakfast. The kids going to public school, they're already down the road. You want to go to public school? That's been one of those poking things that we've used with our youngins over the years. If you were going to public school, you'd already had to have all that stuff done hours ago, and you'd be riding the bus right now with your hair in knots. You know what that is? That's presenting the truth. You know what? Sometimes a young person in the, in the bleariness of the morning goes, Oh, Mom. Oh, Dad. Why do you want to say that? Well, because it's true. You know, sometimes the preaching does that. The reading of the scriptures in, does that. We think, oh, man, why do you have to go and say that? Because it's needful. Because it's right. Because it's true. Well, I just don't agree with that, preacher. Well, you don't agree. It's not me that you're disagreeing with. It's God. And when you disagree with God, guess who comes up with the short end of the stick? It ain't God. Guess who comes up at fault? It's not God. Listen, and sometimes you walk in, time to wake up. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm trying to help you. Don't despise the prophesying. Prophesying. Don't, don't have a low opinion of the presenting of the truth. Why? 1 Corinthians 14, verses 3 and 4. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 3 and 4. Let me jump back here. There we go. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 3 and 4. He says... And, and notice, verse 1, follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, rather by that you may prophesy, present the truth, present the, the preaching of the truth. And uh, anyway, verses 3 and 4, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. What is he doing? Building up. If I'm presenting the truth of the gospel to you, if I'm presenting the truth of God's word to you, it's for the point or purpose of building you up, making you better. An edification, an, an exhortation and comfort. It builds up, it challenges, it comforts you when you need it. Verse th uh, 4 there, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to build up the church. That's what presenting of the truth does. Builds up the person who's the listener, right? Your mom may have told you in the past or somebody around you may have said, you're not supposed to eat junk food, or at least not all junk food, right? It's not good for you. You need to eat the broccoli, the cauliflower, the, 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 uh, the carrots. The carrots are really good for you. I don't like that stuff. You don't eat it because you like it. You eat it because it's good for you. Man, I might need to preach on that for a little while. I see a lot of ugly faces out there right now. 
You know, stay on that. You, you know, we live in a soft society. Did you hear? Somebody said that recently. We want ice cream and cupcakes and Jolly Ranchers and chocolate bars. Carrots? Broccoli? Zucchini? Cauliflower? Oh, I'm not a rabbit. Hmm. Yeah, well, you're also not healthy either. You know, man, I, I probably shouldn't, I don't have really time, but this, this, well, I, I, I'll just finish it out with this thought. You know, I went to the doctor. I, I mentioned this on Wednesday night. I asked you all to pray. And I, I praise the Lord this morning. I, am, I do feel better. My cough is still there, but it's not as bad. And I don't attribute it to the medications that I've been taking. <laughs> I'll tell you what I, I, I attributed to here in a second. But, you know... The doctor gives you medicine, 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 prescribe this, prescribe that, try this, try that. And, you know, I was taking like five, I think, antihistamines every day for a couple of weeks. And it just wasn't doing anything. And this past week, in fact, for the past couple of weeks, but really this last week, I found myself outside in the heat much of the day, brush hogging the pastures, clearing the, the fields, working the blackberries, doing the outside chores until I got so hot that you know what really tasted good? Water. I can't tell you how many gallons of water I've drank this week. The other thing is I got so hot. All right, now if you don't like nasty, I'm going to give you a warning. I got so hot out there that snot was just running out my nose, and I found myself blowing my nose all over the place. But I feel pretty good this morning. I'm just saying that sometimes if we just go back to what God says and do what he prescribes, instead of doing what makes us feel good in our softness, sometimes it just goes ahead and solves some of our symptoms that we have because we're just not wanting to do the hard stuff. I'm not here to hurt you. Eat your broccoli, eat your carrots, Eat your cauliflower, eat your spinach, and quit whining about it. It's good for you. Put it in your ice cream. Oh. My wife's been serving me scrambled eggs in the morning. With green stuff fried into it. Mmm. Mmm. Nothing like some scrambled eggs with their, some, some spinach fried in there. Mmm. Hmm? Florentine. Florentine. It's good for you. Salad for lunch with carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower, and all kinds of other good stuff chopped up in there. Anyway, just personal side note. I think God knows what he's talking about. And I think we should listen. And I think when his Holy Spirit speaks to our heart, we ought to go ahead and humbly submit to his leadership. And we will be prepared for the Lord's coming when he comes. 
rather than saying, well, it's too hot. Well, there's a lion in the streets. Well, it's, I just, I've got these other things that are pressing on me. Start saying no to self and yes to God. Start listening when God's speaking, whether it's through the preacher or whether through it's your devotion time. Devotion time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better, with your carrots and your broccoli and, your, and, and, and all the rest, go ahead and do some devotion time with it. It will really be a benefit for you. Well, I've got a couple more points, but I think I'm going to wait until next week. Lord willing, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the last couple of points next Sunday. And then we'll move on to something else that hopefully will be just as nutritious spiritually as this has been. Because Jesus is coming, like it or not, ready or not. You know, I read that story about the ten virgins. Five wise, five foolish, five prepared, five not. And I think, man, I really feel bad for those virgins who got stuck outside, but it's their fault. And you know, the reality is at judgment seat, when we're standing before Christ giving an account for our lives, I'm certain that he's going to have compassion on us. But in the end, he's a just judge, and we're going to have exactly what we deserve. Things are going to play out exactly like they should. And I'm thankful that his grace has covered my sins, but the loss of reward might be more than I want to bear. So, preparation, listening, heeding. You've got about 12 minutes, 13 minutes to the hour, fellowship, get a, don't, don't, don't dig into the food yet. I know it's tempting. I don't want to see any napkins showing up in the AM service, all right? You have a cup of coffee, if there's any made, have it and have it back there and don't bring it to the service, all right? I know it's tempting. We're going to worship God and uh, want to encourage you to do it respectfully. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for your love for us. And Father, we, we've heard and been challenged by some of these thoughts today about yielding to your Holy Spirit and the leadership and the teaching and preaching and the preparations that you want to have made in our lives and how we shouldn't quench that and, and put it off or put it away or despise it in any way. And I pray that you'd help us. Help us to be prepared. Help us, and, and I know that we keep quenching, we keep saying no, but I pray that your Holy Spirit would continue to prompt and challenge us to continue being prepared to be ready. Father, we ask for your help, and uh, pray that you'd guide and direct. Bless our day and our morning. And Father, I think of Miss Gail this morning. I pray that you'd comfort her and give uh, those attending to her wisdom and understanding and, and insight into what needs to happen. And I pray for Miss Rachel. I pray that you would provide. I pray for whoever might have hold of her IDs and, and her purse and her possessions. I pray that you'd, you'd prick their heart and they'd listen and that you'd have them to return it uh, in your perfect timing and your perfect will. And I pray that you'd help us to be patient until you work it out in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.